Okay, today I'm going to be talking about how to make a Salado or Sanagua carbon, inner carbon bowl. It was used for waterproofing the, the ceramics somewhat and uh, makes for a neat, neat piece of pottery, a good fruit bowl. This one is a textured surface and I got some paint on the bottom of it. I use it in my house as a fruit bowl. Um, it was done with a, just a stick with the rope twined around it. And see, this one just has a, some little cane pieces of cane. Like I took a little piece of cane and cut the end off and use that for texture on there. A band. And same with this one. It's a little bit different design. They usually did a lot of little corrugation corrugations with their thumb on some of these things. But I'm going to show you... A, a quick way to make one of these. Alright, so I'm not going to be in this picture until the end maybe. But I'm going to be using a form pot. The Lazy Susan. Here's my stick that has a string wrapped around it. And a paddle. And you might use an anvil. You can use a gourd scraper. I might use one of these plastic clay scrapers. And a non-traditional plastic bag. Um, Back in the old days, they would have covered it with some dry clay dust, but these thin bags are nice if you can find them. The only bad thing about them, they do leave little uh, plastic impressions on the clay when you flip it over, so it's a little more work for cleanup, but that's fine. So, also a big ball of clay here. Start out with this hammer. Hammer fist this thing into a nice big pizza. You can also hammer it out on the table if you need to. Just put a, a piece of cloth down to keep it from sticking to the table. Get it fairly thin, maybe a three eighths or even a half of an inch. You can always hammer it thinner. Just want to make a big enough piece to drape over this form pot. Now this isn't clay that I bought. I dig this clay. It's a brownware clay. It's fairly strong stuff. This is how I start almost all of my pots. I've made these today. Uh, this is just starting the base, the base of the new one. So. But we'll keep it a bulk as a bowl. So I'm going to knock some of the weight out of this pot and make it kind of thin. These pots, or this style of bowl, was made a lot around the Four Corners area, well, sorry, the Flagstaff area, uh, Sedona, Camp Verde. There's a lot of these shard fragments around that area. If you're hammer fisting these things, you just want to make sure you stay in the line and go clockwise or count counterclockwise and just thin your pot out all the way. Don't just sit there and hammer in one spot because you'll get a thin spot and that's where your crack will develop. Okay, so I'll add a little bit of water. I'm going to knock out some of these. Fist marks. Some of the old pots look to have been like a fine corrugation, but 
a lot of work for such a small bowl. Uh, I guess if you got the time to do that, that's the way it was done traditionally. And, uh, I know that the paddle and the anvil culture was there, so I'm sure they employed the paddle and there might have been easier ways or doing the, the designs on some of the pots. But some of them looked to have been fully corrugated, which is a whole lot of work. I don't have time for that today. So I'm gonna just take one of my tools here and cut that off. Just lightly paddle around the lip area. smooth out your pot you can use your paddle and a little bit of water and just kind of smooth it out. This is the only part where I use a bit of water on my pots to give it that get rid of all those bumps. give it the textured surface. I'll start out right here towards the, the center. And you can go all the way down with it. You can also do it at a bit of an angle. pretty quick this this technique this is probably why so many cultures used it back in the day is you don't have to sit there and coil up from a, a pookie you get most of your pot or half of your pot done over a, an existing pot and then we'll let it set up for a little while and flip it over and just clean up the lip and it's done dry smooth or get it to leather hard and then just polish the outside too a lot of them were polished really nicely on the outside and the inside this one I think will just polish the inside kind of go over this a little bit make sure I got all the spots and we'll Clean up for evenness in a little while when they flip the pot over. tell you I cover the lip up with the plastic bag that's one good thing about using plastic bags and it keeps the lip area pliable and this is dried for uh, say 20 minutes or a half hour probably about a half an hour to stiffen up finish two pots and then uh, I have a bowl of sawdust here if you don't have a pookie bowl these are my pookie bowls that I use to flip these over into you can use a bowl of sawdust get it at your pet store or any of the other stores and then you can cover it with a cloth and flip your bowl over in that keeping the bottom round 
but I'm not going to use that today. I'm going to use the Pookie Bowl. I'll just set it in there, pull out the form pot. Remove the plastic bag. I'll kind of center this up a little bit. Now you want to make sure you let your pot set for a while. That way the clay can you know set up and stiffen up. Otherwise it could all come collapsing down. Some clays are different. This stuff is pretty strong, so it doesn't really need much dry time at all. It'll hold its position. So I'm going to just smooth out the inside of the bowl and then later on today I'll polish it when it sets up enough. Maybe tomorrow morning it might be leather hard. Enough to polish anyways. So I'm just kind of cleaning up the lip here. using a scouring pad they work pretty good just kind of get them damp and fold it over the lip and just drag it along real lightly and it smooths out that lip real nicely If you need to do any extra texture on the bowl, you can just kind of hit it up. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, it's the next morning and this bowl is fairly leather hard, so I'm going to start polishing the inside, and that's what the outside is looking like. I could probably smooth those out a little bit and give it more of a realistic look to but it's, it's, it has a nice texture. And then uh, just take my crystal polishing stone here and just start burnishing the whole bowl, the inside. Probably burnish it once and let it set for a little while and then burnish it again. There's a few different techniques of burnishing. This is just one of them. You can also let it dry and do little wet little sections at a time and burnish it. Or you can cover it all in mineral oil once it's dry. And uh, do that once or twice and then 
wet it and then oil it again and then wet it and then that makes a really nice shine that way. I'll have to do a video on how to do that. But it starts to, this clay is not the shiniest clay, but this will polish it up enough to where the carbon will look nice and shiny when it's fired. That's kind of how you do. And one other thing, if you can't find a good polishing stone, I get these at those dollar stores carry a lot of these glass blobs and one side is really smooth, the other side has some kind of impression, but they work great for polishing. And they're just polished glass or melted glass blobs, so they they last for a little while. I mean, they're cheap enough to where you can throw them away and get another one. I think you can buy like 50 or 100 of them for a dollar. And they work, work good for polishing too. In case you don't have a polishing stone.